Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn, I'm a psychic medium, and today I have a really, a treat, just a treat for all of us here in YouTube land. So I have brought a good friend of mine, Afefe, and she has her own channel, Touched by Tarot, and I encourage you to check it out because she does these weekly card readings that are so on the money. Now, let me tell you what I mean. She just did a pick a card, which is basically she gives you three options and you pick one, two, or three, whatever you're drawn to. And I did it with her this few days ago. And I picked number one. And this woman gave me a reading, like I'm getting chills. Like, I'm like, how does she know that about me? <laughs> I'm like, how does she know that? Nah, -uh. you know, and I'm like, oh, I got to take notes during the pick a card. I'm taking notes. I'm like, hey, you know, so well, how does that even work? If they tell, introduce yourself, tell us how that works. And then we're going to talk about how she got to use Tarot. What what happened? What led her to Tarot? How did she get here? Welcome, welcome to the channel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. I am really honored to be here. You know, I love you to pieces and I love your energy. I love your enthusiasm. Um, I, I love the way that you open doors for all of us, both in your, I'm going to call it your medicine, even the way that you are able to you know, access other realms and help all of us understand sometimes some really touchy and top, you know, traumatic kind of topics. And and sometimes, and, and other times you have us just busting out laughing, you know, with some of your anecdotes. So truly it's a, it's an honor and a pleasure for me to be here with you. I appreciate it. Um, I am growing my practice and, and I think I always will. I think that's part of what we do, right? We're never boxed in, especially those of us on a spiritual path. So when you mentioned the pick a card, thank you uh, for watching and, and, and partaking in that. And you're right, you know, I even have to sit down and take notes uh, you know, with, with some of that. But the idea, and the one reason why I'm gonna do more of those, I haven't done a lot of them, but you will be seeing more of those on my channel is because I'm finding, and I think we may have even talked about this, it engages, everyone you know you don't feel like it's just me coming on and, and interpreting something for you but it allows people to have that sort of interactive experience where they're attracted to a certain stone and the idea is once they you know once they see the cards that i pull something's gonna click it's gonna make sense so delighted to do that and also really um incorporating more we talked about this incorporating more astrology into uh, my readings because I find in a lot of decks, and especially when I was new at reading, there's symbolism all throughout Tarot, uh, astrological symbolism. And, and to not utilize that is, is sort of a waste. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely do more of that. So a lot, a lot to come, a lot stuff, a lot's on the, on the burner. I'm excited, I'm excited to see it. I'm telling you, you, you had those three stones, and I really wanted to pick the blue one. I wanted to pick the blue one, but they kept saying to pick the very first one. And I'm like, okay, you know, so you learn after a while to listen to the guides if you're smart. Um, and so it was just so on the money for me. It was basically like getting a reading. So if you haven't checked out her channel, you're gonna find everything you need to know about her to check her out in the description box. So that is also her website. She offers tarot readings, which I've had one. We've exchanged readings. We'll talk about that too. Um, she's amazing. Uh, really and truly, really gifted at this. So if you need a reading, please check her out. She's going to help you. Um, I know that she helped me tremendously. So, so with that, having said that, I want to ask you, how in the world did you get here? I mean, have you been doing tarot your whole life? Um, did you get a pack of tarot cards in your Easter basket when you were six? I mean, what happened? You know, um, cause I'll share this quickly. Um, and I don't think we've talked about this before, but, but I was a journalist. My background is in journalism. We did talk about that. Journalism led me to my spiritual practice, but I do want to share this story, um, with you and, and your viewers, you know, when they say never say never, right? Because. I was raised in an environment where you didn't like if you didn't have Tarot, you know, it was the Baptist church. You didn't, you did not. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. So I remember I had a really close girlfriend who was Catholic and they were like, they were, they, she'd come home on a Sunday and have a couple of beers and stuff. And I was like, what? Or a little wine. She'd, and I'm like, what? You know, you think, what? 
And so one day on her coffee table, there's a tarot deck. Uh -oh. And I literally freaked out. I was like, okay, wait a minute. One of us has to go. Either the tarot deck has to be, you got to put that up or I'm leaving because like, that's a, that's a no-no for me. I can't do it. And she said, Lana, are you kidding? And here I go with the Lana Fefe. Everybody, my first name's a Fefe. My middle name's Lana. It's interchangeable. Go for it. Um, so she's like, listen, you know, stop, calm down, you know? So that was years ago. And then when I was, uh, while I was working as a journalist in North Carolina, I was assigned a story of what turned out to be a historic site of an African-American cemetery that dated all the way back to slavery. It was a little ironic because the, it was in Cary, North Carolina, which I don't know about nowadays, but at that time, one of the highest per capita um, uh, wealth distributions in the country, bar none. So no, so the idea, the very idea that here there was this, in this overgrown, uh, no headstones, it had been attached to what was formerly a black church. And, and no one was in the church anymore. I think the church had been, it, the building was still there, the structure was there, but it wasn't functioning. But uh, so on the side of this church, which was very popular um, to have cemeteries next to churches, I don't know if they still do that, but certainly in the South, that was a very popular thing. And it was overgrown, weeds, no headstones, just totally overgrown, but the graves were still there. So I was sent to do this story. And one of the people I interviewed uh, was a, a shaman who said, a, a black African-American shaman who said, listen, these stories are bound and we need to learn more about them because it is our history and it's our spiritual heritage. And I was like, what do you mean? You know, so. Long story short, it set me off on a journey of reading everything that I could. There were lots of um, plantations with, with um, structures, buildings, houses that had been built by slaves that were still there. And that kind of got me thinking, yeah, we never talked about this in the church. We never talked about how, how black people or people of color of, of different races, Native Americans, we never talked about what their practices were, what their traditions were, how they, you know, how they worshiped. They weren't Baptists for the most part. I'm pretty sure. So anyway, so that led me down that path. And I remember uh, my first tarot deck that I went into a new age shop and bought. And I remember taking it home and kind of closing myself off in a room, like, you know, like I'm doing something, you know, like I'm a teenager smoking my first cigarette or something, right? Like, <laughs> and that was it. I was hooked. I felt like my eyes were opened and it just, it just, I never, I never stopped. I wow. never stopped. Yeah, absolutely meant to happen. So my professional life, you know, led to this but I often tell people that it, it still informs my style I was joking I think we were we were laughing about um when we thought about doing this together you know what did I do I went online and started looking at articles about you know the court I got I got the resources I got the new I got quotes from the New York Times you know about about the intersections uh, intersections between psychic mediumship and intuitive to row readers and, and, you know, things like that. So all fits together. That is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. So, so we were interested because we gave each other uh, readings. So we traded readings. And of course, my style is very different. I'm a psychic and a medium. And, um, and Afefe is very different that she's a tarot reader and, and an astrologer, astrologist. And uh, so we were just talking about how those modalities are different and we kind of get to the same place i mean we we're, we're all able to help our clients with the information that they seek but we get it in a different way so um you were saying about you were talking very interestingly about how i connect with the other realms and how tarot and you were quoting um you were quoting what's his name? The uh, James Van Prague. Uh -huh. James Van uh -huh. Prague. James Van uh -huh. Prague, big big medium, a uh, big teacher. I've taken some classes from him. Um, and what was he saying about that? So he made a very interesting, you know, sort of linear correlation between what he said, what he described as psychic ability, which we all have on some level 
right? We're all, we're all, ultimately, we're all spiritual beings in, housed in a body, right? Yes. So we have, we have that psychic ability and it's a question of trusting it, tapping into it, allowing it and opening ourselves up to it. But he made a distinction between having psychic ability and being a medium or mediumship. Because as he put it, when a mediums are able to access what he called the higher realms, meaning that without having any filter, you are able, and I've watched you do it and, you know, how does she do that? Um, you know, you just get it. It just, it's coming in, you know, it's, it's, and I've, like you said, we've, I've had a reading from you. So I know it's not just about you getting on YouTube and allowing it there. It's what you also are able to do one-on-one, -on -one, which is, I have something I want to share with your viewers about how it impacted my life and has helped my practice. Um, but the idea is that as a medium, you, you skip all those steps. You just, it's like a direct line between you and the higher realms and the unseen, the seen and the unseen. So I made a note. And then he says, the intuitive works with more dense earthly energy. It's all energy. It's all energy. We're energetic beings. But he says, we work with more dense earthly energy. You're up there accessing, you know, the, the Akashic records or whatever, like wherever you go, I love it. I hope you keep going back because I just want to know what you bring back to us. But my note from that, that I made, Susan, and I didn't share with you this with you before, but I said, okay, so Susan is, is having this connection between the seen and the unseen. I'm having this connection between the self and the higher self that, that right. Kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of, maybe. Yes. And it, and it really fits together. Um, if I could share what I, you know, and this is again, kudos to you because it rocked my world. It has truly made a difference in my practice. And I am glad, I'm grateful to you and your guides. Your guides are my people. I'm, I dig them. I do, I dig them. Good, I'll have them call you next time to tell me uh, something crazy. Look, I might want to talk to them. Oh, sometimes oh, over the ones Just... you saw from me, right? You know, um, but, but so- Here's how, you know, and again, I hope, I hope a lot of those who join us with this can relate. So for years, you guys, I had been, you know, when I do my own personal readings, there were three cards that kept coming up repetitively for me, repeatedly for me, the queen of wands, uh, the, the queen of swords and the king of pentacles known in tarot as court cards. A lot of times when we see those court cards, we're quick to assume that they're pointing to somebody around us, right? Somebody in our everyday existence parents, spouses, lovers, kids, co-workers, but it's somebody here that we know in this realm. I will, especially when I'm reading for clients, I can pick up that it is someone deceased based on some of the cards that come around it. If I get death repeatedly, if I get um, the six of cups, which often can be a card of something in the past, the nostalgia, but I was not connecting those dots for myself. So when you, when Susan read for me or or I shouldn't say read but interpret it. How do you how do you describe your process? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Call it a reading. Okay. I don't know what I okay. do. I, I don't know. Well when when Susan you know dropped her wisdom on me <laughs> she said she saw three I said Queen of Wands, Queen of Swords and King of Pentacles. She saw three guides one male, two female and she described them to a T. It was like, what you remember that that uh, those old commercials where the guy is sitting there listening to the it's like the Alpine sneakers uh, uh, speakers and the sound is so like dun, 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 and you know and you just it blew me away because I knew it and that's one thing about spiritual truth when you hear it you know it. everything in right or you get you set me off. You get chills. Sometimes you may get emotional and you start, you know, I have that happen when I'm reading people very often and I, you know, and then they want to pull it back and I'm like, uh-uh, let's go. I, I might cry with you. Let me go get a tissue. Um, but it really, it really, so, you know, again, we keep going back to how these methods, they are not separate. They are not, you know, they're not meant to cancel one or another out. We don't have to choose. They are very complimentary. And, and I've been at this for, you know, going on 30 years and for just, real? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. What, 95? 
2015, 2025. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, about 30 years. Close to it. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow, wow. So. And okay. you did that for me. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank your guides. It's, it's actually my guides talking to your guides. So um, that's, that's how that went down. And, and I'll say that I don't, I can't share a lot of what you told me because it was a little bit personal, but it was a very powerful reading for me. It, it crystallized, you know, you know, when you need a reading, this is what happens. You can't see the forest for the trees. You Ooh. are like stuck. I can, and, and look, here's a newsflash. <laughs> Psychics and mediums, we all get stuck. We can't always read our own stuff because our ego is the loudest voice in the room. So if your ego is, bu- is busy screaming at you, it's very hard to hear your spirit guides. Um, now, your ego would be involved when it's something emotional or, or, you, or you have a, a lot of feelings about it. Well, that's the very thing that you need a reading over, right? So, you know, even me, if I turn to the cards, so sometimes I can't talk to my guides because my ego is just trip. I can't, the, the voices are confusing and I can't tell which is which. So I go to a reader like this amazing reader. And, um, and she really helped me crystallize everything, like things that I'd really been struggling with that I couldn't, you know, you just get to this point where you can't get yourself out of a wet paper bag. Like, you're just like, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. I give up. Right. And, mm-hmm. and she totally crystallized and, and she knew, she knew, she even knew I didn't have to tell her. She knew what was going on. <laughs> just like, I did. I did. This is what's going <laughs> on. This is what you need to do about it. You know, I'm like, thank you. And can I share something briefly with you, with you, sure. Susan, while you're on that topic? Okay, because you mentioned earlier that um, in my most recent pick a card that I did a couple of days ago for the for the new moon and uh, Aries, I guess it was on Friday. You said you were drawn to the amber stone and you were drawn to that green crystal face, right? Yes, yes. You're not the only one. Someone else I know who is really gifted, uh, especially in Reiki, uh, was drawn to both. Mm-hmm. And she looked and yeah, and she actually went ahead and looked at both and then said, nah, I'm going to let that blue one go. I'm going to choose the amber. Here's what I'm going to say to you, because I do without like I respect our privacy and I'm not going to go into the details of the reading. But here's what I knew. And I know we're going to get some amens on your feed when I say Let's do it. OK, you are so amazing. Oh. And you are you are because you're humble and because you you have such a generous spirit um, and you're sincere. Guys, I kid you not. Hand on a Bible right now. Harkening back to my old days, when Susan and I talked about doing this, her first response to me was, whatever we do, Lana, FFA, it has to help people. First response, it has to help people. Not entertain them, not, you know, let's get on here and share some laughs and just go. It has to be helpful. I want to help people. You all, that's, that's what kind of human being we're dealing with. And that's why you're going to go far, always. But so that, that first pile, that amber stone, was very much about that confirmation that, okay, this group is, is you know, they're people who, oh, well, we're blowing it for those of you who didn't already do the pick a card. Now you're going to know what it was. You have to wait for the next one. But, but it was about people who, like yourself, who are gifted, who are on this path, who are meant to teach, who are meant to do this work in whatever modality. It was, it was total confirmation, confirmation, okay? That third stack, that green stone that you kind of w- was about people who were meant to be on a much broader stage. It was literally, I remember feeling and interpreting at one point, the world is your oyster. Wow. You are meant to get out in the world. You are meant to experience the world. You've been- so Susan Lynn and your humble self, You've got so much in store for you. I'm going to go ahead and claim that. that, And I would encourage you at this point then to go back and watch it because there is something there for you. And, and I know that you're the first one that would go, wait, wait a minute, me, you know, I, wait, okay, not so fast. Slow down, line. There, there goes your Aries moon again. <laughs> Everything, you know, let's just go. So fast, we'll so figure fast. it out. Let's jump off the cliff and we'll, we'll check the bungee cord on the way down. Exactly. <laughs> That's the Aries for you guys. That's the Aries. So we were even talking about how I love astrology. I don't know how many of you people know that, but I literally bought an astrology book. And I mean, it was this thing uh, when I was like 11 or 12 years old and I read it and I read it. I spent the whole summer. 
I read it and I read it. I cannot understand astrology to save my life. I have read books. I have tried. I get my chart done. I just can't make it make sense. And it's so frustrating to me. And I was telling her this before we started recording. And she, she said, well, I'll tell you why it doesn't make sense to you. <laughs> so that's, that's how we got to this, where she explained to me about the, the, the energy levels, right? But in, in all, you know, so astrology is a sort of like tarot and that it's the denser. Is that what you're, is that what you would say? Yeah, it, it's a system. It's, it's, you know, it's, I mean, we, we think about the cosmos and it's out there, but it's really, it's based on a very mathematical, you know, logical scientific system. You know, it's, 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 you can point to it. You can pinpoint it. You can, you can chart it out, map it out. And, and that's not, that's not what you do out there. Like, <laughs> I'm that's going to slow me down. You know, that's going to slow me down. Oh my God. Yeah. It's yeah. so funny. So, so that's, a, that's think, for you. If you, if you don't, if you're drawn to something and you can't get it to work, I guess what would the message be there? So if you're, you know, sometimes we're just drawn to something, maybe it's a past life, you know, perhaps I did astrology or astronomy in a past life. And in this life, I'm like, I'm, I'm drawn to it, but I just, in this life, it's not for me. <laughs> no. Been there, done that in this life. <laughs> it's confusing because I'm so yeah. attracted to it and I just keep beating my head against the wall, right? And then, yeah. you know, of course, you look around and you try to pick um, things that other people are doing, right? So, you know, I try the tarot and then my guides are arguing with the cards. I'm like, well, y'all cut it out. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I can't handle all this. It's Who are you going to listen to? I get five dead people together. I'm like, everybody sit down. Do you know what I mean? Like I, somebody has, talk one at a time. You know, I've, I've come in, become a kindergarten teacher. I can't hear I all it. these people talking to me. So it's just it. very interesting. So for you though, you're drawn to astrology and you mm -hmm. use astrology, right? And it I mean, clicks. Do you, do it clicks charts? for me. Do you offer charts for people? I do. I'm starting to. I'm starting to. Um, I got a little more that I want to do before I go full fledged with it. So even on my website, which we'll talk about later, I'm not offering that service just yet because one thing I am, you know, I think we've talked like I'm a Capricorn sun with that Aries. Moon. So I'm like, I don't play. Ethics is my thing. And, and I'm not going to pretend, you know, to get to, oh, yeah, you know, and sell you a bunch of stuff that I don't I myself don't completely know inside and out. So I incorporate the, the parts that I incorporate. I know what I'm talking about doing someone's chart though. That's, that's really thick. And, and it, in, it includes so many things and so much that has to be interpreted. So I'm not quite there yet. I can pull a chart and I can give you an overview, but like, you know, there's so many levels to it um, that I'm not offering that service just yet, but I will be, I'd say, give me about another six months and I'll, I'll be ready. Um, but here's what I, and I think I said this to you before we started taping, but here's the really cool thing about it is, you know, when we talk about the integration of these different types of services or these different types of, of, of gifts that we explore, you, you do understand astrological concepts. You get it, you know, you totally get it. But that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to include it as part of your practice, especially if, and we were talking about that, that, you know, following your intuition and following, if it's causing that kind of in, um, conflict, you know, if you feel like you're going uphill all the time when you do, there's a reason for it. And it's just not, you know, it doesn't mean that you're not supposed to understand it or apply it in your lifetime, in this lifetime, but, but it doesn't necessarily have to be what you do or what you offer your clients. And that's not leaving anything out from them because Lord knows they're going to get more than enough when they sit with you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're going to be like, mm -mm, I don't need the astrology right now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even need Please it right stop. now. Please stop. I yes. don't need the astrology. I, I, got, I got to put it all, you know, <laughs> but so good. So good. Well, thank you. You as well. I mean, really and truly, I, I got so much out of that reading. Um, it really helped me. I was stuck. I was definitely stuck. So I want to ask you a question. So what's the most surprising thing that you have learned with the Tarot? I mean, what's, what was really some moments where you thought, whoa, that makes sense, or that 
is an amazing thing that I've just learned or that you were able to share with somebody? Um, I think on the spot, she had no idea. It was gonna no, happen. no, no, no. Yeah, absolutely. You know that we, I love it. Um, I think for me, it's been, let me put it this way. I think one of the reasons where, whether you're a practitioner or whether you're a client, whether you're seeking services or whether you're offering services, we are all intrigued and, and, and want to know and mystified and, and becoming demystified about spiritual concepts, right? So part of what happens when, you know, the thing that's really taken me, like, I'm in awe is when spirit reveals truths through the cards. So for to, to, to dial that down a little bit, let's say someone's asking me a question about their job. You know, it, should I quit? You know, is, is my boss going to get a clue and give me a raise or should I just go ahead and get out of there? Very common question. And I may start pulling the cards and I'll see the boss, you know, get a depiction of the boss. I'll see what the conflict is. I'll see if money's going to start flowing and all of that. But then I will also say, spirit, before, you know, while I'm doing this and I'm doing what I always call my famous clarifiers, I'll say, just show me, let me know that I'm on the right track. And if I'm on the right track, give me an ace of cups. Oh, snap. The friggin' ace of cups will come. You asked and I can't. You ask them I will you ask. Them. I will ask them to give me a card. I'll say. And sometimes, if I'm not, you know, if I'm just a little loose, maybe I had a glass of wine or something. I'll say, okay, you know what? I don't. It doesn't even have to be the ace of cups. Just give me a cup. Because there's 78 cards here. There's earth. There's right. There's wands. There's all kinds of other things I can get. So just give me a cup. Dang. And that, yeah. You're yeah. asking. So that has been. To- I want, yeah, I want spirit to verify themselves. See, Customers and this is verified. what I'm saying. So your guys are probably sitting there right now going, mm, mm, oh mm, no, mm. this poor girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're like, we just she we did. just stopped talking to Susan and she, just, <laughs> she asked okay. us to verify. We just go do something else for a while. We um, just go go do something else for a while. Yeah. Wow, so, so that wow. has certainly so been. Then you get like you don't even ask the client for clarification. Yeah. You ask no. spirit. You're like, because yes. well, yes. Mm-hmm. What were you gonna say? Because I want to make because I want to make sure, Susan. It's very important for me. So you, this your process is different. I want to make sure that I'm giving accurate information. It's one of those where I think I know what I know, and I know what I know, what I know. I know these cards like the bag. Like I could do it. I could do it blindfolded, but I still want because I recognize that we were talking about ego earlier, and because I recognize that I'm still a human being and I'm still in this body, and and so I always check myself. That's my humility to say in this process spirit has final say i don't care how long that 30 years of doing cards doesn't matter right now i want to make sure that i'm giving need and they didn't come to me they came to me because they know that i can help them and go to access spirit and and come back with something solid so wow. i do i i'll do that but i just want that. people to know that that is like a, a level up right i mean i don't you guys chime in with the comments because y'all know I'm not a real person, but I've had a lot of tarot readings and I've never known anybody to demand. <laughs> let's face it. She's demanding. Let's just face it. Let's it's, just that Aries, it. it's that Aries moon. It takes an Aries moon it. to do that. It's like, y'all better bring an ace of cup in here. And I'm like, hey. I, I, I need an ace of cup. But, and, that's, and see, that's what I'm saying. That's the beauty of it. Because yes. they will do it. Well, that is a mind blowing experience. I will say. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely. So mine, I, I totally get it. And you know what my workaround is for that? Because I, when we do this kind of work, the, the hardest thing to do is to trust what you're getting. Um, because, you know, it, it's just very, it's very hard to know. It's just like she said, am I really connected to spirit? Are these cards really dialed into this client? For me, I, I knew and spirit knew i I had to just step aside. So when I do my readings, I'm not even here. It's like when I do my videos, right? I don't, I end the video and I'm like, I don't know what I just said. And I, I don't know what I said. Yeah. Then I really yeah. mean that. I have no idea what I just said. And I watch them later and I'm thinking, well, Susan, you could have said this and you could have explained that a little bit better because that doesn't make any sense. But it just, that's what came out, right? So that's And it made I sense to us. Thinking. 
Well, good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense it. to us. We got it. <laughs> but that's how I safeguard, right? That's how I know that my ego is not getting involved in your all's mm-hmm. readings or the videos because I stepped aside. Mm-hmm. Now, for me personally, I can't, it's hard for me to step aside all the time personally. Like sometimes I will literally put myself in a trance and I'm not even kidding. And I will put myself in a trance and I'll get my phone out on voice record. And then I will, while I'm in a trance, I'll talk to my higher self, which is, you know, so we have our higher self, which stays up there throughout all of our incarnation. Sure. sure. And then we have sure. our spirit guides that are under that. And then we right. have the helper guides. So I'll go right. straight up to big mama. <laughs> and Thank say, you. you know, we got a problem down here on planet Earth. I need some help, you know, SOS. <laughs> and and right. then and then I'll get, I'll bypass the ego. But right. other than that, I'll go to somebody like Lana and get a reading because right. it's just easier for me to do that than to Mickey Mouse with my own ego, with my own stuff. Right. With everybody else, right. I don't have a problem with that. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I feel like I'm raising my, my hand in class now. Susan, can I ask, because you just said something that pained me. <laughs> um, you were breaking down the levels of guides. I don't know that I've ever heard it put that way before. Know, could, you, could you say that again? That yeah, was fascinating. Yes. I did a class. I did a class. Once a journalist, on always a journalist. You guys are going to laugh. All of y'all are going to laugh. But I did a class on spirit guides. And I was like, my God, I could write a whole book. I talked for the whole first two hours, you know, extemporaneously, just like, Blah, blah, blah. and people were like this I was like are y'all okay they're like yeah I'm like wow okay I didn't know I had that in me so anyway here's the thing our higher self which some people call the over soul or the subconscious mind but it's the let's just call it the higher self that's the part of you that's closest to God or whatever it is, that is for you the highest the maker the creator whatever that's the highest part of your consciousness and it stays up there of course through all of your incarnations The next thing is the spirit guides. Your spirit guides have incarnated before and more often than not, they've incarnated with you before. Now they may not have incarnated with you for three or four lives or maybe 20 lives, but at some point they incarnated with you. They know your soul and they know how to be a human. So that's what makes them useful, right? I mean, this is what angels don't do that and angels don't really understand what we do, what we go through. It's a very unique experience as a human. So you have your guides and you can have one or two. And in your case, you had three, which is very unusual. Um, I would say the majority of people have one. And then some people have two. Very rarely people have three. Um, and then under that is the, the guides that I like. And that those are my helper guides. The helper guides are more, they're, they're more like your brother or your sister. They're more collegial They laugh with you. They joke with you. They harass you. Um, They're just way more on your level. Whereas my guy, my main guy, whose name is Sam, he, he doesn't really get involved all that much in my life. He's sort of like the principal of the school. When you end up in the principal's office, you got, you know, you're going to have some problems, right? You're going to have to answer some some things, explain yourself. So I try to stay out of his way personally. Yeah, um, try to avoid I, suspension. I, exactly. <laughs> so uh, God knows. So the helper guides are the ones that are just in your life. Now I will say this really briefly, and that is, you can add helper guides anytime you want. A helper guide can come in for one purpose. Like I had a helper guide come in and help me with my taxes, and I've never done them faster. I've never done them more thoroughly. I did them in one day, and. It was the bomb. So like you could ask a helper guide to come in with a remodeling project or school or um, parenting, anything. The helper guide could stay for a day, a month, a year, whatever. Like, for instance, this will make sense for you guys. When I was talking to my guides about eating cheese and about my diet, uh, why well, ask them about my diet and all they could talk about was cheese. But anyway, um, those were that was my helper guide. And when I stopped being serious about my diet, they left. Now they didn't abandon me. They simply just gave me a break because they realized I wasn't working with them. So when you stop working with them, they'll give you a break. When you're ready, they come back. Does that make sense? Total sense. (laughs) Wow. That was like, that was mind blowing. 
That was my, you know what? You do, you got to do that book, Susan. You got to do that book. And I, you know, I mean, I'm sure there are many more well-qualified professionals who would gladly work oh, no, with you. But if you ever needed someone, book. yeah, I, I would, I can, I, I have edited some pieces and, and especially compilations and stuff. But anyway, I, I'm, sign me up. Like if you so ever, that would be, that would be. come with two ice packs for your head. <laughs> No, not at all. Not at all. I would be, it would be my pleasure. Absolutely be my pleasure. Cause that's the way you just did that and your ability to just disseminate information in, in ways that make sense, you know, and, and logically just so that we can absorb it. it that I'm not familiar with a lot of what you just said, or at least not the way you just presented it, but it made complete sense to me. You know, it made complete sense. Um, if I could share one thing that that crossed my mind in terms of my practice, and I do think that a lot of your viewers could um, maybe benefit from this, because you will hear me if you if you you know follow me at all, or if I read for you, I talk about ancestors, Ooh, and I do think that. right right, and um, and when you talk about guides, you know, I I do want to when we talk about demystifying things or you know really, you know, we're two nitty gritty people. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm straight, no chaser. Um, when people talk about ancestral, you know, connections, I do think that there's, especially in spiritual, spiritual communities, there's a tendency to think, okay, well, wait a minute. We're, we're going into some uncharted territory here. Are we talking about worshiping ancestors? And there are certainly people who will, um, who, who go that route, but but also there is this aspect, at least in my practice, where I view ancestors, because when you were talking about people, or not people, but energies who can relate to exactly where you are today in your flesh, they understand the cheese situation. They probably had problems with cheese at some point in their, right? You know, it was a, it was a situation with cheese. That's probably <laughs> so, what we have in common. You know? It's, and it might even be in our DNA. We don't know. But the idea is um, when we talk about guides, I do, I, I want to just chime in in terms of ancestors, because it's not about worshiping them as in they, they replace the creator or source or whatever your, you know, or God or whatever your, the divine is. It's not a replacement. It's not a substitution, but it's in this idea that you can seek wisdom that they now have from that other realm and they can relate it to you because they, they've been in your shoes or my shoes. They understand what we're going through having, having lived in, um, in earth, on earth before. So, so I will say that because I have noticed sometimes I'll, I'll talk about ancestors and people will go, I'm not, I'm not quite so, you know, what do we do with that? But then you use a term like guides and there is an idea. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm there. So. I just wanted to share that another area where things are there's there's a meeting you know there's an there's an interplay and an exchange and so you're using tarot you can you pick up on ancestors yes absolutely absolutely i do in fact i just did um i won't you know i won't go into details um in respect or privacy but i did a reading recently for a client who found out that um she had she had inherited a parcel of land that in another state that she didn't even know existed. Oh. And apparently this land had been in her family dating back to slavery. Wow. And so she wanted a reading with me because she was having all of these sort of feelings like, should I go try to find, you know, whoever is there taking care of the land? Should I find my people? Should I just let it go and, you know, sell the land? Should I, I don't know what to do. Like it just brought up all of these feelings in her. Yeah. And so, yeah, we went to the cards and, and, and she got a game plan. By the time we got done with that, that reading, she had a game plan and it was very clear what her connection was and what she was meant to do and, and why at this point in her life that happened. Yeah. There you go. Wow. That is pretty yeah. cool. Right. Oh, it felt so good. It felt so good. It felt so good. Wow. Yeah. And you know, I mean, we know uh, when we're getting a reading, we know when something, we mentioned this already, when we, we know that that that's a hit that that resonates, right. It gives mm -hmm. us the chills or the, whatever it is, or you just feel it, you just know, you have a knowing sometimes. Yes, yes, 
I absolutely had a knowing. And because I, you know, we're human. We, we, we feel one another's energy, especially in the setting of a reading. And so um, she got emotional and I felt it, you know, I felt it all in my heart space, like, you know. <laughs> You're, Mission you're accomplished. Right Look, I didn't have to go looking for the Ace of Cups that day. <laughs> now, I still cannot believe you demand uh, an Ace of Cups. I mean, I, that's just amazing. Um, it and it's amazing that they give it to you. I do it humbly. You know, I don't go, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't put my hand on no, my hip like, look, I, I, I know. need it. <laughs> you're very humble I, and respectful. I I've seen that. You're I very know. And you're very collegial with them, you know, like, show me this, let's do, you know, you're very, it's almost like they're there right, right with you. So you do the readings via anything, right? Phone or Zoom, or how do you do, do your readings? Well, you know, may we one day get back to the point of being able to do in-person readings, right? But I will say this, um, you know, everything to a greater purpose, because one of the things that the pandemic has done, it's opened up doors for us that normally, say if I were working in a metaphysical shop or, or you know, some other place, then my clientele is, gonna, I'm depending on, you know, mostly working with local clientele, beautiful thing. But for all of the isolation that the pandemic caused, I've, I now have clients in Australia, Sydney. I have uh, clients in, I just read for someone in um, Mumbai, India. Nice. Um, I, oh yeah, I mean, just all over, we've connected. Like I just, it's opened up this whole world. So right now my, um, if one, someone wants to book with me, they can go to my website and it will automatically, once they, they do the booking, it sends them a Zoom link. Like it's all That's automated. Website. What is your website? My website is truly touched by Tarot. Okay. For whatever reason, when I had it built, uh, when I had my, my website done, Touched by Tarot, the name was taken. There's no website out there with it, but maybe someone reserved it a long time ago. So had to you know, run with it. And, and, and I thought, okay, what will people easily remember? Truly, truly touched by Tarot. I love a little that. bit longer, I love that but anyway. yeah. That's yeah, beautiful. truly, truly touched, by touched by Tarot. By Tarot.com? Mm -hmm. Truly touched okay. by Tarot.com. And I'll put all this in the in the description as well, but just in case people are listening and they want to, you know, leave our beautiful conversation. No, you wouldn't do that. I know you wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> but if you just want to jot it down. Um, great. So any questions for me? Do you have any questions for me? You know, I... I... No, nope. good. I like I don't, it. Yeah. I mean, if I started, I wouldn't stop. So, sure. so you know, we'd be another two hours. But, uh -oh. but well, well, one thing I do want to say, and I think I feel like I've said this to you, but maybe I haven't. And if not, I'm throwing you under the bus uh, mm -hmm. right here. And that is, I see you teaching. I see you teaching Tarot. Mm -hmm. Like I yesterday. Know. I know. I know. I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to do <laughs> it. I need to think about... Um, the framework, you know, and I know you said that, you know, I need to come up with a framework. Like, does that mean that I, I do a Patreon and I open it up, you know, how I, I started, um, I started just doing a couple of recordings and I did do a couple of tapings of the cards, but I found that it was, it felt like it was a little conflicting energy because people who aren't trying to learn how to read to row were like, well, why are you doing that? We want to know what's getting ready to happen this week, you know? <laughs> So then that, okay, that made me feel, all right. So maybe this isn't really the form for me to do that. But I do, I hear you. I feel that in my, like you said, we know when we, when we, when we feel it. And I do feel um, that. And I think that's something we both have in common is that we can take concepts and, and break it down. That goes back to, you know, me, me being in journalism because you had to learn how to do that. You had to learn. Um, one of the toughest stories I ever had, I had to go to a boxing, a person who trained, um, not Angelo Dundee, but one, someone who was in his camp, because I'm in South Florida, Muhammad Ali, back in the day, you know, he trained down in Miami. Oh, I didn't and there was know. this old guy. Yeah, he, he was down. And there was this old guy who was still around, like 90 years old. And my editor said, you know what? This guy's an institution. You should go do a story on him. I don't know. I know who Muhammad Ali is, but that's about it. I don't know anything about. And it was a cover story, meaning it was like a five. So yeah. So my point is, um, I'm. I know how to take information, and and make it 
available to people in a way that whether they know about it or whether it's foreign to them, it's going to make sense. And, and I do know that's a gift. I'm, I'm honored to have it. And I'm going to utilize it. It's coming. You're I, Susan, should it be a book? What? Should it be a book? How yeah. It? Should it be a book? Yeah. I'm thinking it might need to be a book. It could be Books a book. Books are teaching. But before you do the book, you're going to be doing, you're going to be teaching. I'm, I'm telling you. Or they're okay. telling me. I'm not telling you nothing. They're telling you. Um, Zoom. On Zoom. And, um, and it, it, it's, it's okay. It's coming. It's coming except for the, so because I see things like sometimes two months out, but the energy feels like it's right here. It confuses people, you know, like my videos, like I'm like, this is about two months out, I think. Um, but yeah, so if you're, the energy feels like now for you, okay. um, but we all have free will. So you, this now energy could end up manifesting this week, next week, or next month. It's up to you. You know, sometimes we just wake up and we think, I'm going to do this. And we do it. Yeah. You know, we have the activation energy yeah. to do it. I feel, look, let's speak it into the universe and, and I'm ready to do it. I'm certainly willing. It's not, and it, and it's not a, a res, any resistance on my end on that part. And it could even be that I do workshops or, yes. you know, something yeah. where there's that, but, but just the haphazard sort of, you know, oh, I'll throw up a video here and there, here and there. And that just didn't seem to be very helpful That's or organized. You, you know? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and you're such a teacher and you're, you're going to be so good at it and you're going to really you're going to be able to, to connect with people on a soul to soul basis and really help them get it in a way that a lot of people can't, you just, you have that gift. I'm just telling you. So Thank um, you, Susan. whenever you're ready for it, you know, um, offer it up and I'm sure people would be happy to take advantage. Absolutely. Of it. Absolutely. I got to teach and you got to write. Oh Lord. Um, they've been trying <laughs> to get me to write. They've been trying to get me to write for a long time. I'm going to tell you a long time. Um, and currently my laptop, the backspace button doesn't work. The backspace button doesn't work. What? I don't know if that's them saying you can't go back. <laughs> okay. It has okay. some spiritual connotation to it. But it sure is. Yeah, special. it does. It does. But you, and you know, also, Susan, you can do, um, uh, what is it? The audio. Uh, because you said even sometimes when you go into your trance, you'll you'll do your so you can do there are audio audio to uh, text That's translators true. and that would You're be right. one, another way for you to get your book down. You're right, and I just want to point yeah. out if you're watching this video, thank you for watching. But if you're watching this video, you just saw my spirit guides work through her. Is she on this side for you? Anyway, work through her to give me this message. So you just saw her spirit guides work through me to tell her about teaching Tarot. And you just saw her, my spirit guides work through her about the book. And you might have noticed that even though we're both open to those concepts, both of us are like, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, get, I get right on that. <laughs> right on that, right? So that's yeah. why. So look what's happened here, you guys. Our spirit guides have called us both out on the internet <laughs> where all of you all are going to give us grief for not doing it or, or, or if we don't do it. Right. So that's so mm -hmm. sweet of them. That's it. Or, and, or they're going to go, Oh, you know what? That reminds me of the project I was supposed to be doing, you know, then their spirit guides, it's going to, it's going to be a pay it, pay it forward kind of energy. Yeah. Right. Be that. Go, oh, okay. I know I was supposed I to message. do this as well. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I'm sure so. some of you guys are supposed to be teaching or writing a book. So that's mm -hmm. a heads up for you. But, but this is how you get messages, right? So I'm always about a teaching moment, right? So he, he, I will be talking to a stranger and they'll say something and I'm like, that's for me. You know what I mean? Like they have no idea. They don't yeah. know me. But I know that yeah. that thing that they just said had magic or energy around it. And I know that, that yeah. they're here in front of me right now. They've been placed here by our guides. Yeah. to give me that message. Has that ever happened to you? It has. It has a hundred percent. You know, I, I can't tell you how many, how many readings I've done. And it's not like I'm trying to read myself into it yeah. because I understand that there's, there's that, but certainly in terms of just being able to relate and understanding that there was something that just happened that was, that fed my soul, that informed me, that inspired me, that made me thoughtful um, in a way that, that it wasn't about me, but, but there was that exchange. You know, I did walk away with something from it. 
And it's one reason why I think we are really privileged to do this work. That's right. That's you know, right. It I'm reinforces on the other side of the of the reading, right? I'm getting my own, you know, I'm learning, I'm 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 always growing. It's like I think you said, and I don't know if it was on the video, but you're always gonna be growing, you're always gonna be learning. Always, That's me. Always, always. Always until the day I cross over, you know, I'm gonna be learning something right up to that moment, I hope. Um, because that, that's my spiritual growth. That that's what's important to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. That's it. And I think that's why we came here. I mean, come on, think about it. Apparently, from what everybody said, you would know better than I. But it sounds like we were in paradise. You know, it sounds like things were pretty cooking pretty good over there. And for yes. whatever reason, uh, we signed up and, and said, oh, I'll go. You know, Earth, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. You know, and, and that is why. <laughs> it's true. You're it's so true. Right. You're so right. You know? You're so right. We Our came souls here to learn. Go. You know, our souls weren't challenged over there. Everything was completely, you know, copacetic. Was um, was there was no growing there. So we came down no, here where we got a master class in growing. <laughs> you know, whether you knew it or not, whether you planned for it or not, whether you anticipated it or not, that's what it's about. And that also goes back to why, you know, all your viewers um, appreciating them and for those who do seek us out because it is relational. It is why we're here. I will say sometimes, you know, for those, if you bond with me on, on or follow me on my channel, I talk about we're here to walk each other home. You know, I'm not the first to say it. Many have said it, but I adopted it. You know, we're here to walk each other home. And, and I think it's a privilege um, that we have. And it is also and reinforces why we see ourselves that point you were just making before that, that sometimes we have these readings or we have these encounters with others and, or with the guides. And, and we realize, oh, I see how that, how that applies. I understand. I understand. Yes. You know, never fail. Never say never. Um, I will a large part I hope it's okay that I say this Ooh. you know you're gonna have to do like the Oscars did the other night and just pull the plug and <laughs> well we'll be right back uh, oh lord coming from that, that um, Baptist background I also had very distinct ideas about sexuality I'll leave it at that and what was permissible and what was right. not Right, right, right. And, and what was normal and what was not. And so lo and behold, when I had my very first opportunity to get hired at that newspaper in North Carolina, 95% of the staff were LGBTQ. Oh, 95, yeah. I kid you not. Yeah. And so the editor before hiring me took me out to a private you know, lunch away from the office, away from, I, I went through about four interviews because I was their first African-American full-time staff member. And he, did, he had me sit with the other staff writers, like he just wanted to make sure it was gonna be a good fit. But privately, he met me, he took me out for lunch one day and he leaned over the table and he said, listen, if you're gonna have a problem with this, you're gonna have a problem. And so of course, a problem, what is there to have a problem with, <laughs> you know? So I start Monday, right? <laughs> but, but the bottom line is it broadened my world in ways that I didn't anticipate. And that's, so I'm going back, circling back around to the idea that we're all here to walk one another home. I did not understand what that meant. I was always in a very buttoned up corporate environment before that, you know? And very, you know, even don't ask, don't tell. You right. know, people didn't, and here, it was, come on over, you know, come on over to my house and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna light the bonfire and get naked and, and dance in the water, whatever, be yourself, be free. I didn't know what, I was like, what? And it was what the most wonderful, what have I done into this day? I think back, I'm always getting emotional because it was one of the most wonderful experiences. It oh. taught me so much about humanity. It taught me so much about, you know, the intersections of race and class and culture and, and Southern, Northern, what it just, it was so pivotal to my ability to do this. Because if you're gonna do this, you gotta be ready to sit next to or across from anybody. I don't care if they're pink with purple polka dots. 
you better be ready because you're there to help them. And if you're the conduit, you know, if you're the one that got chosen for the task, Aries and uh, Moon and Aries, let's go. <laughs> so I hope say, it was okay that I shared that. Oh, yes, it was, it was a powerful, powerful moment. Broadened my consciousness like to a whole different level. Absolutely. No, I agree with you. you this this kind of work, you you don't know who you're going to get. You know, you you pick up the phone and you call someone and you start the reading, you know, or Zoom or whatever, and you don't know what's going to happen. But I will say that, I'll just say this, I'm so grateful to be on YouTube and I'm so grateful for my community because I know that nine times or 9.9 .9 times out of 10, I'm going to get somebody who's not a Trumper. <laughs> I don't know what I could do. I read one Trumper in about two years and, and and they didn't come to me obviously through my youtube channel and i was just like you know whoa uh because they asked some very unusual questions you know what i mean about is this gonna happen and i was like no you know what i mean so i yeah. am grateful i i will say that i am grateful that i that i don't but i will also say that lana is right and that the next step the next the next phase of this existence here in the United States is that a lot of these people are going to be needing help and they're going to be looking for people to be compassionate and they're going to be needing readings. And, and, and it's, it's up to me, you know, as a compassionate person to, and of course I would, right. I, I'm going to spirit does it anyway, but I'm going to be there and be fully present and give them the best reading that I can. So that she's absolutely right. That that we, this is a level of professionalism here, you know, that we there is. honor spirit. And if you don't honor spirit, spirit, spirit will not honor you. I mean, have you ever heard that, Lana? Have you ever? I have. You I that? have. And I just and I just felt that all across my shoulder blades as you said that. That was a that was a truth, you guys. Write that one down. <laughs> I, I know people. That was the truth. I yeah. know people that decided that they weren't going to honor spirit, that they were going yeah. to tell people a little bit more of what they wanted to hear or um, a little less of what spirit wanted to say. And in the end, their, their, their practice just, just collapsed. Collapse. Yeah. Just collapsed. You know, so you just collapse. to honor spirit. Um, that is not only your professional duty, your ethical duty, but it's also yes. your spiritual duty. Yes. And it will grow you as well. You know, okay. that that recognizing that at the end of the day, I don't care where we came from. I don't care what our background is. I don't care about our wealth, our stuff, any of that. We all bleed red. You know, we all bleed red and and red. Blood. And so there is that. Now, I will say. You saying that was so beautiful and it reminded me of how we opened up with that James Bond prop because there you were accessing the higher realms and me over here in that dense energy, I'm thinking, mm, I might have, I would demand the ace up front before I even, <laughs> I need, am I supposed to read this? I need an ace right now. An ace would really be handy for me. Oh my God, see, <laughs> you're right. You're right because if, and see, I don't do Zoom and I don't do in person, so I can't see the person. But God forbid, I this, you know, I had this experience where this guy came to do work on my house last week and he had a Trump hat on, a Trump hat in my yard, in my physical presence. And I was like, breathe, 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 you know? So, you know, yes, I agree. That is be hilarious. You know what I mean? Like, yes. wait, you got, yes. excuse me while I check with my guides. What are you yeah, doing? I need to make sure. Are you sure I'm the one that got elected to do this? Are you sure? <laughs> I need an ace right now. I need an ace. An ace. <laughs> so, I would have to put the line on hold and be like, I'll be right back. What in the heck were you thinking? You know, yes. but of course they're going to bring it to me. They're probably going to bring me 10 Trumpers now just because. Oh, Susan, just because. That's it. That's it. But you know what? It's all good because if okay. we go, there must be a purpose. There must be a reason. There must be a purpose. Absolutely. And and it's all good. At the end of the day, it's all good. And you you actually made, you know, we're joking, but but there's a vital truth to that, Susan. And it is, and it's something I hadn't really thought about. But see, that's why I love you. And I'm sure your viewers do too, because you you make us think about these things. I'm not sitting here thinking about the fact that that Trumpsters are gonna really need sooner or later, they're gonna really need some help reality is going to set in 
the error of, of their ways. And that's not to say suddenly they're going to become something other than, but, but something is going to shift, I do believe. And, and that's something that had not occurred to me until you just said it. Yeah. yeah. I'm still going to ask for my ace. <laughs> but... <laughs> And you know what? But, we but all I get it. rise to that challenge because we're compassionate and we're and we're yeah. and we're we're spirit. We are basically, you know, spirits mouthpiece or um, yep, spirit you know, in these bodies. We're spiritual we beings and having an earthly them. experience. And we're gonna and we're gonna so. help them. We're all going to help them. Nobody's gonna turn their back on them. We're all gonna help them because, like we you will. said, we all bleed red. We do. We do. Now I may have to, you know send you a message or something like Susan I need a pep talk right about now <laughs> well I don't know I'm not, I not sure if I can do- <laughs> that guy that um that, and I'm not even proud y'all know I will say when I'm not proud of myself I will tell you and I'm not even proud of myself because this guy came to replace a window and he broke the glass and I thought hmm he's like well I don't know what to do I'm like well you're probably going to get another glass <laughs> he thought I should pay for the broken glass. And I'm thinking, was I out there? Did I break that glass? Had that guy not had a Trump hat, I would have been like, Hey, you know, things happen. I get it. I'll buy the other glass. So I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it. Yeah. No, no, no. Listen, we're human. We're human. We are human and we're learning. That's what we said. We're going to keep learning. We got lots to learn. We're going to keep learning. (laughs) Oh my gosh. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. It's absolutely been a blast. I knew it would be, but it's absolutely been a blast. And I appreciate you. Oh my gosh. It's been a blast. And I, and I'm telling you, I think you're going to see us again because I think we'll be doing more things together. Cause I would really enjoy that if you're up for it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. It's always going to be fun. There's work to be done. And I and I, I believe there are no accidents. So there's a reason why we met. And there's a reason why we do this work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so we'll if make it you happen. guys have questions, we would love to hear them in the comment section. If you have comments, we'd like to hear those too. And Lana can jump in and answer. If you have questions for her, you can address them to her and she can jump in and answer those questions in the comment section. As I mentioned, All of her contact information will be here in the description box of this video. And I hope you guys get in touch with her and check her out. At very least, check out her YouTube channel because it's really helpful to have. Do you do that once a week? How often do you do those? No, I do it. I do it once a week. I do the week ahead um, readings. And then I always check in for the new moon and the full moon. So at least once a week and then those two special readings for the new moon and full moon. Very, very cool. Yeah. So yeah, you can yeah. basically get a reading. I mean, if you check in and you can watch her and, and divine what's ahead for you that week. It really does Absolutely. work like that because if you're drawn to watch it, then that energy is resonant with you. If 100%. you know, that's just how it works. You're drawn to what is resonant. Yep. Yep. And I want please you world stage, Susan Lynn. The blue stone okay. is sitting there, it's sitting there waiting for you. <laughs> or the green stone, whatever it was. <laughs> the green pill or the red pill. Either way, but it's there waiting for you. You oh, are meant to do so. We need you and we need what you do and we need it in the way that you do it. And and before we go too, I know your viewers, you know, they know how you are, they but I have to say just personally from my heart to yours, um, as someone who's new in not new at this work, but new in social media, trying to build, trying to grow. And, and I've had, you know, I have had moments where I just wondered, how do I not compete, but how do I, you know, how do I differentiate myself? How do I get, you know, what, what's going to make somebody choose me when there's tens of, you know, thousands even of, of other, in, in, in typical Susan Lynn fashion, cut to, she said, but, but your, your people are your people. Your people are going to be drawn to you. And that was profound. You know, I didn't need to go read a a, a thick text on, you know, human psychology or whatever to get that. You were able to just convey that to me and your sincerity. And it it hit me so hard that I believed it. And I still do believe it. So thank you for that. Because, you you know, you do that for people every day. Every day. You are so sweet. You are so sweet. You do a lot for us. 
Thank you so much. Thank you very, Thank you. very much. And right. I'm going to end this video because she's about to embarrass me. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll catch you again, hopefully, on her channel and on my channel as well. And take really good care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody.